everybody. I am here with Kylie. Hi. And Avery. Hi. And we are excited because we are going to teach this week's lesson together. So you guys know that we have been in a conversation about who God is and what he is like, right? And when we're talking about who someone is and what they're like, we are talking about their what? Do you remember that word? Characteristics. 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 Good. That's a tough one. Can you guys say characteristics? Good. And those are just words that we use to help us to identify someone or something. And so we talked last week about how we have characteristics, right? We have characteristics that are physical that show or tell about what we look like. So I have brown eyes and brown hair. And Avery, you've got brown hair and hazel eyes. Mm -hmm. Those are some physical characteristics. And Kylie? And you've I got... have blue eyes and brown hair. Yeah, and there's lots of different physical characteristics, right, that you guys could use to describe yourselves. And then we also have characteristics that describe our personalities and our character and more about, like, what we're like. Like adventurous and creative. Mm-hmm. And... Did you lose it? I, lose, <laughs> I lost it. I lost it. Kind? Um, yeah, kind mm -hmm. and loving. Kind loving. And loving. Good, yep. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about many different characteristics that can describe what you're like. And so just like we have characteristics about us, God has characteristics too. And it's important for us to get to know those characteristics of God because it helps us to get to know him better. And since we're trying to build a relationship with him, just like we would our friends and our family, it's good to get to know those things about him. So we are going to do that today. Let's review the characteristics that we've learned so far, okay? Let's test your memory. So the first week, Allie and Mason and Cassie taught us that God is powerful. Power. Avery's going to show us the object that Allie used to help us remember that God is powerful. That's it. <laughs> it requires some power. We got our 10-pound weight. Good. So this reminds us that God is powerful, that he's got lots of power. And then in week two, Allie and Mason and Cassie taught us that God is our protector. Okay? And remember, I don't have that really cool shield that Allie has, but she taught us emotion to help us remember that God is our protector. Remember this? God is a good protector of us. And then in it's like week... an X. Yeah, it's like an X. So in week three... Chael and Jen taught us that God is compassionate, and they showed us their really cute dog, Hershey, and talked about how she's really good at knowing when someone is sad or needs something, and That's similar to God, yeah, yeah similar to God, um, that God is compassionate. And then last week, we talked about how God is unchanging, okay? You want to show us the object to help us remember? We've got a rock. Do you remember why we picked a rock to remind us that God is unchanging? Because rocks stay in dirt through storms, rain, earthquakes. Mm -hmm. I mean, in earthquakes, they might not. Be busy, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they survive all of that, mm -hmm. even lightning hits. Mm -hmm. For the most part, a rock remains unchanged, right? Just like God is unchanging. And so his love for us has been the same that it was the very first day that he created us. And his good plans for the world are always going to be the same. And so some of the characteristics that we are learning about God are things that we also share. Okay, so things like God is a good protector and God is compassionate. Those are things that we can also have. So maybe you know that your parents are good at protecting you. Um, and maybe you are very compassionate. That's something that we can all be right? We can know when somebody needs help and show them compassion. But then there are some characteristics of God that are very different from us that we actually don't have, right? So like the one we learned last week, are we unchanging? No, we change a lot. We do change, right? So we, we change as we grow up. We change what we think and we change, we grow we, taller. We change what we believe. We change the things we like. Oh, yeah, the things we like. So you probably don't like the same things that you did as when you were two or three, right? Because you change as you get older. 
But so that is a characteristic that is just unique to God. So that means that only God has that characteristic. Okay. And so the one that we're going to talk about today is another one that is unique to God. Okay. So let's dive in to today's lesson. All right. Something that God made us with are our five senses. Okay. Do you guys remember learning about your five senses? Yes. Okay. We're going to go over those and I'm going to help you out. Okay. So God made our eyes to see. See. Good. And he made our ears to hear. Hear. Good. He made our tongue and our taste buds to taste. taste. To taste. He made our noses to smell. to smell. Good. And he made our hands to, to touch. 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 And good. Feel. You guys are really good at your five senses. So let's start with the first one. He made our eyes to see. So what is something that you guys can see? Um, you. You can see me. Yep. I was thinking about the moon. Have you guys ever gone outside at night and looked up in the sky and seen maybe the full moon shining bright and white in the sky? Have you seen that? I can like see the sun, but it's very bright. Yeah, it's hard to look it at the sun. Says... But so with the moon, when we see the moon, we can see it from a distance and we can kind of tell that, you know, it's round. But can you actually see what it looks like up close? Can you see the craters and the, the different ways that the moon um, the light hits the moon. No. no, no. Without a telescope, we can't really see very only, far into if space. If you did that, you would have to be like up there to you see can't, it. And yeah, right. You'd you have to get really see, close. Like astronauts and mm -hmm. aliens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're limited in what we can see, aren't we? Okay. How about hearing? So something you guys can hear is my voice, right? You guys can hear me talking mm -hmm. right now. Would you guys be able to hear somebody talking a mile away? No. 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 Not unless you were talking on the phone. But if you were just trying to listen, you wouldn't be able to hear someone a mile away, right? Because we are limited by what we can hear, mm -hmm. okay? So we are actually limited in a lot of different ways, aren't we? So I want you guys to think about something that you know a lot about, okay? So why don't I have you share, Kylie? What's mm -hmm. something that you know a lot about? I know a lot about animals and cooking and baking and art and stuff. A lot of things. Okay, pick one. Um, baking and cooking. Baking and cooking. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. I would agree. I think you're really great at cooking and you do know a lot. Would you say that you know everything there is to know about no. baking and cooking? No. Do you think anybody knows everything there is to know about it? No. No, right? Because we're limited by what we can know. What about you, Abe? What's something you know a lot about? Basketball. Basketball, that's a good one. And do you think that you know everything there is to know about basketball? No. No, still a ways to go. Would you say that anybody knows everything there is to know about basketball? Michael Jordan, yes, but <laughs> anyone else, no. Okay, yeah, even Michael Jordan, I would argue, is limited in what he can know because our minds and our brains are limited, right? And so you guys can probably think of some things that you know a lot about. I'm sure that you guys have different things, but you still can't know everything there is to know about that. Let's think about our bodies. Our bodies are limited because we need sleep and we need food, right? So we can't just keep going and going and going forever. We have to stop and we have to rest. We get hungry and our stomachs growl. And we have to feed it with food, right? So we're limited by what we can do. Um, we are limited by where we can be. Can you guys be in more than one place at a time? No. No. No, right? I can't be in Island Lake and Wakanda at the same time, can I? Right, so you guys see my point. My point is that we are very limited. Well, God is actually very different from us in that God is not limited. He can do anything. Yes, and so that is the characteristic that we're going to learn about God today. So the word that we're going to talk about is infinite. Maybe this is a new word for you. Can you guys say infinite? Infinite. 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 And so there's a little word in there that is finite. The word finite means with limits. So we are finite. We have limits, right? But then when it has that little word in in the, in the beginning, it's a prefix, and that means not or without. So God is infinite, which means he is without limits, okay? And so this is really good news for us. Because it means that God's love for us is without limits. And the way that he takes care of us is without limits. And so that means that we have nothing to worry about as his kids. That he can provide for us no matter what. 
and he has the resources available to always care for us. So we are actually going to watch a short little clip of a story that happened when Jesus walked the earth, a really amazing story, and it's going to help to teach us about how God is unlimited in the ways that he loves and cares for his kids. So I hope you enjoy. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men, besides women and children. Welcome back. Wasn't that an amazing story? You saw how Jesus took the very little amount of bread and fish that he was given and was able to multiply it into enough to feed 5,000 people or more. That is because our God is unlimited or infinite. So there are no limits on what he can do and the ways that he can provide for you in your own life. That means that you are loved without limits. So whenever you are feeling small or you are very aware of your limits, just remember that you can come to God, the God who is unlimited and infinite, and you can ask him and he will show up for you. The symbol that we are going to use today to help us remember, since I don't have an object, is this infinity sign. This is actually a math symbol. But when I think about it, I think about it as like a train track. If there was a train on here, that was able to keep going on and on, it would just keep going around the tracks, right? It would infinitely go around the tracks as opposed to a track that had a beginning and an end. So just like that, our God is infinite. He's without limits and he wants to give you his unlimited love. So I'm gonna go ahead and pray for us and then we will go ahead and go about our day. Jesus, I just thank you so much that you are unlimited, that you are infinite. Thank you for scripture and the stories that we can read from the beginning that show us your unlimited power and the ways that you have always been providing for your children. Thank you that when we feel limited and we feel small, that we can come to you and we can ask for help and we can trust that you will show up for us and take good care of us. So I just pray that as we go about our week, that we would just remember that truth and that when we feel limited, that we would come to you, the God who is without limits. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, guys, we hope you have a great week and we will see you next time. Bye.